very useful energy, then that heat would be transferred later. This is a direct drive compressor. This direct drive compressor takes uh, Freon from the uh, panels and it runs that because this direct drive is uh, causing the pistons to go up and down. That gives us heat into the boiler. The boiler expands the other Freon back through that into a double acting piston that's going back and forth. We're converting with mechanical apparatuses. We're converting that into shaft rotation. That shaft rotation turns this wheel. As this wheel turns, it causes the compressor to turn. As the compressor supplies the heat, it causes this wheel to turn. You might say these two wheels are powering each other. And by the way, once the Freon has taken the heat, it then uh, made the power, it then goes up here. This is a condenser. We're sucking water out of the bottom of the tank, could be the well. And we're running the water through this pump right here that's also driven by the same drive mechanism, running the water into this condenser. It's the world's most efficient condenser at 100 degree delta T, 6 million BTUs. And as we're then running the water through, we're making the water hotter, but the water will also be being pumped. And as I do this, I'll show you the water being pumped. And then also, we're cooling down the Freon, which is going into this canister and is being pumped right back into the boiler by a little trombone uh, pump that's running on the same cylinder. You ready to try it? Let's go ahead and try it. Let's turn it on, guys. Okay, if you're ready, Maestro, anytime you're ready. Okay. So it is pumping water from energy taken out of the air, and we'll light the lights too from excess energy. So the lights are being lit from excess energy from the air, they're pulsing. It wasn't set up to do that, so we don't have it stable, but we thought we'd just demonstrate the excess power that we have. Main thing is it's pumping water, it's supposed to be pumping water. That's a closed loop because it's continuing to go through the boiler and in back. I had a heat pump in a walk-in freezer. We cranked the temperature down to 20 degrees below zero in dead air space. Now imagine this, if you've got any background in refrigeration, we're in dead air space, the temperature's 20 below zero. We did it every single Saturday for an entire year. People from all over the world came to see it. We said, bring your own test equipment, take the thing apart if you want to. We had a $10,000 challenge to find any gimmick or anything in it. And Every single weekend, we cranked the temperature down to 20 below in dead airspace, and we made water hot enough to burn your hand from energy we took out of that box at 20 below at a two to one COP. Same average performance of the GE heat pump in America. Only it's 20 below in dead airspace. And we challenged all the heat pump manufacturers to come anytime you want to, either find a hoax with us or bring your unit down and see if you can do that. Nobody ever came. A lot of customers came, lots of people, people from all over the world came, Pakistan, everywhere. So anyway, we're in here testing this every year, every, uh, every weekend for a year. And a man came to the show one day and if what, a, what a guy this was. Now we're trying to build this thing, it's gonna take two years and two million dollars and I'm raising capital selling heat pump things to get the money. And a guy walks in and he comes up to me at the end of the show and he says, Mr. Lee, I am absolutely astonished. I want to shake your hand and I want to tell you, I have no doubt you have got the best heating system in the world. Yours tops everything out there from solar all the way down the line. You did it. But you need to know me. You know why you need to know me? Because I have built the world's most efficient heat engine and you have got the world's most efficient heat source. He says, if we got together with our two technologies, we could become the most dangerous men in the world. I thought, wow, I've never been the most dangerous man in the world. I've kind of wanted to be. And so, you see, this man's name was Dr. Fisher. Now, this guy built the steam, built, proved that they built the steam engine wrong. I had the pleasure of building his unit in my research lab and we took his great big unit because why wouldn't I want a great big one? I don't want to put everybody on the grid system with a new system that can exploit them some more with all the arrogance that comes with it. I wanted to give people the opportunity to be totally independent of the grid system. Remember, that was my goal. So we took the big one we had and we scaled it down into a model not much, a little bit smaller than this one.
It was a little smaller than this. It was about that long. It's about 13 inches long, six inches in diameter. And that one was going to be big enough to be able to power all the energy you needed for your house. And so I didn't want one bigger than that. And by the way, that little unit could fit in the glove compartment of any American-made car. I went across the United States of America telling my story. I told it in every state of the United States, and I got a thousand people to join me telling my story. We put a media ad campaign together because the media wouldn't cover it, so we ran commercials. And we did a 60-second commercial cutting a power line and saying you can power your house with no electricity, external electricity, run your car with a new engine that runs with no gasoline. We did a 60-second commercial nationwide. As far as we can tell, about 10 million people saw it. And after that happened, that was too much. That couldn't be tolerated. And so I got a letter from the state of California inviting me to come back to California to go to court. So I flew back from New Jersey to California to go to court. And when I walked into the court, the judge said, you're probably wondering why you're here. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, because I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison. And I said, well, that's really interesting. You're putting me in prison, but I've never been convicted of the crime. <laughs> How do I go to prison without a trial and without being convicted? And I said, you can't do that, can you? And he said, well, he says, I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison, so that's where you're going, but sounds like you got a hell of a case for appeal. That, by the way, is a quote, and I do have the transcript. I walked out of prison two years ago, and now we have rebuilt our whole national network of distribution of distributors. We're in every state of the United States. We're in every major county of the United States. We have people now who understand exactly how the government works, exactly how the big boys work, exactly how the energy companies work. And we've got it all figured out, and we've got far, far, far more technology than we ever had in 1987. We've got a lot more money than we ever had in 1987, and we're about to rock your world. As if the amazing over-unity results of these pioneering inventions are not enough, a curious combination of side effects to free energy research involves such things as the transmutation of metals, the formation of new isotopes, and yes, even anti-gravity. Levitation effects from spinning magnetic disks conjure up images of UFOs hovering in mid-air. British inventor John Serrell has led the way along these lines, but his technique is not the only approach. The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. The objects you are seeing um, moving there is a form of levitation by uh, translational movement, meaning that the objects become lighter and can float around, the heaviest being the barium cylinder that you see there um, with the two wires coming out of it. it tends to slide around on seven pounds of its own weight. The physics of it is self-resonation of what they call ferromagnetic and piezoelectric barium type name. Uh, through a power amplifier and broad and narrow uh, bands of electrical energy going into this crystal. So the applications of this in advanced applications using free energy or zero-point energy to power it would be in uh, propulsion technologies. This is a crystal converter unit that I made about a year ago to see if the principle worked and indeed it seems to work to this day. Um, the principle 